Hi, I'm June Chadwick and I'm a teacher of the Alexander Technique. I'd like to show you how to have good posture without all the effort. The first thing is to think about where your feet are. A lot of people stand too far back on their heels or too far forward on their toes. A lot of people stand on one foot or prop themselves up someplace else. Well, the poor spine doesn't know quite what to do and neither does the head when you distort the spine and distort the head. When you're nicely balanced over your feet, your pelvis is level. If you put a hand here and a hand behind you, you have a sense of where your center is. Right above your center, you have your rib cage. Now, a lot of people stick out their rib cage or slump their rib cage, and then your diaphragm, which is here, can't go anywhere. So, we need the rib cage to be centered over your pelvis. Now, we want the shoulders to be centered over your rib cage, over your pelvis, over your feet. A lot of people put their shoulders back like this allow their shoulders to fall forward, especially in front of the computer or when they're eating. And so there's no balance with the shoulders and the ribcage and the pelvis. They're all having to be held on to. And most of all, our heads, which are really, really heavy, have to be held on to if our shoulders are here or if our shoulders are back here. Good posture when we're sitting is actually very much easier than the typical slouch, which puts a lot of strain on the back. Or the push-up of good posture, which is really awkward and we can't breathe. So if you're in front of a computer, or you're eating, or you're driving, you want the same balance as you do when you're standing. So your shoulder girdle is over your rib cage, over your pelvis. You don't want your pelvis to be tilted, which causes the slump. And you don't want your pelvis to be tilted the other way, which causes a lot of compression in the back and pain. If you lean forward, because you want to lean forward to see something in front of you on the computer, or you're talking to somebody in a restaurant, everything stays in the same conformation and moves forward together. What happens is a lot of people poke their neck forward, and they, they push their chest forward, and so everything gets out of balance. And as soon as you can let everything just rock forward gently on your sit bones, not on your bottom, so you're more on the front of your pelvis, it's very much easier. Now that you've got your body in nice alignment with your head, your shoulder girdle, your rib cage, and your pelvis all over your feet, when you choose to walk, all of that stays the same, except you unlock what I call your wheels. Your legs are your wheels, and we have three brakes on them. We have a brake on the hip joint, we have a brake on the knee joint, and we have a brake on the ankle joint. Most people do not release the brake on the ankle joint and they do what I call the duck walk. And a lot of people are very stuck in the hips. So we want to release the hip joint, release the knee joint, release the ankle joint forward and just let our body fall over our legs as we walk. 